part five. My mistake. I skip home through daylit streets. But when I run into my building and pull open the door of Madame Marie's apartment, I know I've made a big mistake. Madame Marie's sharp eyes look at me in surprise. She turns and checks the old wooden clock. Too early, it says. Too early for Odette to be home. Shaking her head, Madame Marie puts a stool against the wall. Sit there, she commands me. Face the wall, don't look back. I stare at the clock. Its ticking goes on as though nothing has happened. But Madame Marie, who loves to talk, says nothing. Her silence is terrible. I know I've done something wrong. What if Madame Marie tells Mama? After a long while, Madame Marie says, What did I tell you the heart is like? The heart is like an apartment, I tell her. And how often do you have to clean it and put everything in place? She asks. Every single day, Madame Marie, I reply. She picks up another sleeve, lines it up with her needle. All right, then, she says, clean up the mess in your heart. Take a good look and see what needs to be done. I do what my godmother tells me to do. I think about what I did that was wrong. Instead of going to school, I listened to a boy who told me not to go. Jacob made it sound like it would be fun to play with his toys, but it wasn't. And it wasn't fun getting caught either. I know better now. I'll never skip school again. I want my mother and Madame Marie to trust me. My heart feels cleaner now and I feel better. I take a deep breath. Can I smell the flowers Madame Marie told me about? She turns from her sewing machine and glances at me over the top of her glasses. Still, she doesn't say anything. You won't tell Mama, will you? I ask her. Will this happen again? She asks. Never, I say. Then there's no need to worry your Mama, she replies. I have one more question, but I wait a minute before asking it. What if Mama asked me about school today? Then you must do what your heart tells you, says Madame Marie. I sigh. I know what my heart will tell me, but I don't want to think about that yet. You can climb down from that stool now, my godmother says. She bites the thread she has been unspooling. She angles it into a needle. Would you like to learn how to sew on a button? What a grown-up thing to do. Oh, yes, I say. So Madame Marie shows me how to guide my needle in and out, in and out, through the holes in the button. I do it over and over again. Then she shows me how to make a loop and slip the needle through. The knot pulls tight. The button won't fall off. Well done, says Madame Marie. Her praise is rare. I know I have done a good job. I sew on four more buttons before Mama comes through the door that evening. Madame Marie shows her what I have learned. My, these are strong, Mama says, testing the buttons. I couldn't do a better job myself. Mama hums a tune she likes as we climb up the stairs to our apartment. She does that when she's happy. She forgets to ask about my day at school. I decide I'll never, ever skip school again. A second secret. One day, Madame Marie asked me to come into her kitchen. Together, we fill a box with food to send to Papa. Now that he is a prisoner in Germany, not France, we don't get many letters from him. I registered myself as his godmother too, Madame Marie tells me. That way, I can send him packages just like your mama does. She fits cans of beans and meat together. I drop in some candies I have saved wrapped in red and gold. Madame Marie covers the box with paper and winds string around it once, twice, three times. I put my finger on the string for her so she can tie it tight. Is Germany far away? I ask her. Very far, she says. Will Papa come home one day? But of course, she says. I'll tell you a secret. When your Papa left for the army, I made a yellow blanket for him, just like yours. I stitched a holy medal on it, one of St. George, the dragon slayer. He's the patron saint of soldiers. I told your papa that whatever happens, he must hold on to the blanket. He promised me that he would bring it back home. So don't worry, 
your father will keep his promise. What a good secret. St. George is looking after Papa. They have the same name. My blanket has kept me safe so far. Maybe Papa's blanket will work for him too. My orange. Our teacher hangs a photograph of Marshall Patan on the wall. He's the good father of France, she tells us. He makes sure every French school child eats lunch. Lentil, excuse me, lentil soup, boiled rutabagas, kidney beans with lard. These are what our good father gives us most days. But tomorrow, our teacher says, will be different. Marshal Patan will show fatherly love to some. Children like me, whose fathers are brave prisoners, will get an orange. All we have to do is show papers proving our fathers are prisoners. I haven't seen an orange in a long time. I can't wait to tell Mama. Mama isn't as excited as, it, as I am. I can tell she doesn't like Marshall Patan, but the next day she takes me to get my orange anyway. We have to climb up some stairs and wait in line at an old building. The crates of oranges are emptying fast. At last, it's our turn. Mama shows the papers that prove my father is a prisoner. The lady puts a big round orange in my hand. Mama kisses me goodbye and rushes down the stairs to go to work. I carry my bright orange carefully through the gray streets. A crowd of neighbors has gathered at our metro station. Leah, the corner grocer's wife, is there. She's smiling, holding hands with her little one-armed son. No. A boy I know, Leon, is there too. I wonder what the crowd is looking at. I tug on Leon's shirt. Odette, he says, want to see? I nod. First, he takes off his cap and plops it on my head, grinning at me. Then he lifts me up onto his strong shoulders. He holds my feet with his hand so I won't fall. I feel safe and happy with Leon. A gypsy, a gypsy is showing off his trained goat. The goat climbs a ladder and stands at the top, hooves shaking. He can't finish his trick until everyone puts something in the gypsy's hat. I feel sorry for him at the goat, but all I have is my orange. I'm not giving that up. Put me down, I whisper into Leon's ear, ear, please. I give him back his cap and he winks at me. It's time to head home. I show my orange to Madame Marie. Oh my, she says, how splendid. Take it upstairs and share, share it with your mama after supper. I put the orange in the middle of our oak table, the one with the animal feet. Then I open our shutters and look at the square. The girls from the convent school aren't there today. Maybe they are in church praying to God the Father, the one they say created the world in seven days. They tell me he takes care of us. I'm not sure about this. He never gives us oranges like Mar Marshall Patan. The next chapter will be called An Empty Bag.